In this week's Torah portion, we're taught that we can make a vow or take an oath and that either of them will have binding effect. By giving us this power, God is impressing upon us just how important it is to keep your word. Consider how impressive it is when you know someone upon whom you can always rely, someone who always keeps his or her word, like this guy. Look, it may take a while. I want to wait. There's a bench over there. I'll be back. God, of course, doesn't say, do as I say, but not as I do. On the contrary, he always models the correct behavior for us. Think back to one of his earliest meetings with Moses, with Moshe. He tells Moshe that the patriarchs had known him, had known God through one of the divine names, but not through the holiest name. Because the holiest name indicates a God who keeps his promises. God had made a number of promises to the patriarchs that he had not yet kept. Moshe would see those promises fulfilled. One of those promises was made to Abraham, Avraham. God told him that his children would be subjugated in a foreign land for hundreds of years, but that eventually they would go free and they would leave with a rachush gadol, a great treasure. Sure enough, when it came time to leave Egypt, God made sure that each one of the Jews asked for and received gold and silver, a lot of it from the Egyptians. Not just as slave reparations, but to make sure that God's promise to Avraham would be fulfilled. But the commentaries ask, why did God have to give the Jews gold and silver? Fifty days after the Exodus, he gave us the Torah, the ultimate rachush gadol, the ultimate great treasure. The answer is that back then, like now, not every Jew could appreciate the Torah. So God wanted to make sure that Avraham wouldn't have any claims against him. Everyone, even those people who couldn't appreciate the Torah, could appreciate gold and silver. As parents, we know that if you even hint that you're going to do something and then you don't do it, your children will remind you, you promised. Whether and to what extent you keep your word will directly affect, if not dictate, whether and to what extent your children will keep their words when they get older. And therefore, it's always a good idea, whether it's to your children or other relatives or to colleagues or to business partners, to only make promises that you can keep, to always keep your word, and to under-promise and over-deliver.